Hi, I'm Vicky from Rockstars and Royalty. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I make the tulle skirt to go with the Fortuna gown, which is going to go over the petticoat that I made in part one. Like the petticoat, I want the skirt to be a full circle as well, so it's really spinny, got loads of movement to it. But unlike the petticoat, I'm not going to cut a full circle of fabric. I'm going to cut panels but I'm going to make sure they're wide enough at the bottom to make a full circle. So I've done some calculations here to work out how big I need the bottom of each panel to be. The circumference of the waist is going to be 30 inches. So I hopped online and used a radius to circumference calculator. And I worked out that the radius of that is 4.75 inches. So this is how I need the skirt to be with the hole in the middle for my waist. So if I add my 4.75 inches from here to the 35 inches length I need it to be, that gives me a radius of 39.75, which when I calculate it using the on online calculator, gives me a circumference here of 251 inches. So that means that each of my eight panels, I need to do 3.75 inches plus seam allowance to make the 30 inch waist. They need to be 35 inches long and then around 32 inches plus seam allowance across the bottom here to give me that full circle. I'm going to use this as a guide to cut out my satin and my lining. So there'll be two centre back panels and two side back panels. And then there'll be two side front panels and then my centre front will be cut on a fold. As I'm sewing the satin layer together, I'm going to put my zip in the centre back as well stopping at half an inch below the top here, which is where I'll join my waistband on. I'm doing this because I don't want to catch the tulle in the zip. I want it to sit out and above it, so the tulle will be just joined and sitting above it. It won't be stitched in with the zip. got both layers of the skirt together the lining and the satin and this is how they look at the minute over the petticoat that I showed you how to make in part one so as you can see they're full circles and it looks really pretty just like this but I want to make it even bigger with lots of layers of tulle I'm using this extra wide tulle which I buy by the bolt this color is called silk white and I buy it from fabric.com I'll put a link down in the description so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build layers gradually coming higher and higher up the skirt. So I'm going to start about halfway down. This tulle is about three meters wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut four pieces across like that, the width that I need. So if I want it to start here, I'm going to cut it to there. I'm going to cut four pieces that width, join them together and gather them at the same height around this skirt. So that's going to give me 12 meters of tulle to gather. After I've gathered and stitched each layer on, I'm then going to measure over it for the length that I need to cut the next layer. Because like the petticoat, we have to do each layer getting progressively longer because it's going to be coming out further each time. If I cut them and measure down the skirt, we're going to end up with it curving up at the sides and I want it to be nice and even at the bottom. I'm going to start my first layer of tulle 18 inches down from the waist. I'm going to measure down from the top, not up from the bottom in case the hem's dropped. So 18 inches means I need to cut my tool also to 18 inches. So I'm going to cut four 18 inches long pieces of tool from my tool bolt. I'm going to join them together to make one big circle, which will be a 12 metre circle. So it'll be Sorry, I switch between centimetres and metres and inches all the time. So it's going to be 12 metres all the way around and 18 inches, which is 46 centimetres long. And then I'm going to gather it onto here 18 inches down. Once I've done that, I'm going to put it back on here and then I'll measure for the next layer.
So I've got my tool pinned on all the way around in quarters. So I've pinned the seams of the tool on every other seam of the skirt. Um, and I've done it on the side front and side back seam so the seam of the tool isn't down the centre front of the skirt. So next I'm going to hand gather all of this into place and then I'm going to machine stitch it on. So this is the skirt with the first layer of tulle on it. It doesn't look particularly huge or gathered at the minute, but as I add more layers, it's going to get bigger and bigger. So next I'm going to do another layer two inches above this. Then I'm going to do two more at two inch gaps. Then I'm going to move to doing one inch gaps as I get further up to the top. And I'm going to use exactly the same process for every layer. So I'm going to measure the length I need, cut my four pieces, join them, gather them and stitch them. So here is how the skirt's looking. This is nine layers of tulle. So I've ended up doing all the way up with a two inch gap between the layers. And this is the shape that it's given us. I didn't need to move down to doing one or one and a half inches gap as I thought I might at the top because just doing the two inch gap has given us the, the lovely fullness and the shape that we want. So the last row of tulle to do is this one right at the very top. But before I do that, I'm going to stitch the satin and the lining together with wrong sides together. I'm going to stitch them together and then I'm going to add the last layer of tulle in exactly the same way and then it will be ready to put the waistband on and do the hem. I'm not going to stitch the lining to the inside of the zip at the back yet because I'm going to do a bag hem and I'm going to need to pull the hem up through there to stitch it. So here it is with all ten layers on there. So at this point if you're making a dress you can join the waist seam onto your bodice. Um, I've already joined the lining in, again, it depends how you're constructing your dress, whether you do that part or not. Because I'm doing it as a separate skirt and corset, I'm actually going to put a waistband on next. So to make my waistband, I've cut a strip of interface satin that's 31 inches long by 3 inches wide. I've pressed up half an inch along one side and I've marked my half inch seam allowance at each end. Next I'm going to put it right sides together onto the waist of my skirt and stitch my half inch seam allowance. And I've already stitched my hanging loops to the side seams at the waist. So my waistband is all done, I've folded the ends in and I've put a hook on. Um, I normally do a thread loop here but I've run out of the thick thread that I use so I've just put the eye on here for now, it looks really bulky and horrible but I'll change that later. So that does up like that, imagine that's a thread loop and you can't see all this. And then when the zip does up I'll show you how I attached all the layers of tulle. So I've left the zip without any of the tulle turned in with it and then for each layer of tulle I've just cut it and turned it and stitched it up to the zip so when it's done up we still get that lovely puff of tulle above the zip if it was stitched in with the zip that part would sit really flat next I'm going to do the hem and I'm going to do a bag hem so it's really neat and you're not going to see inside at all so I've got it on my mannequin on my dress form inside out I'm going to pin the satin and lining layers together and then measure it down from the waist and cut it to an even length all the way around. I'm going to repeat this all the way around the hem and then I'm just going to leave it pinned at the seams. Now my hem's all cut and even. The next thing I need to do is to stitch it. So to do that, I'm going to turn it in through the opening I've left at the inside of the zip. So I'm just going to pop my hand in and grab 
the pin that's holding a seam together. This is why I left the pins in so it's easy to get the right seams lined up. And then you hold that and pull it up through there. Once I pulled it through, I take the pin out and flip the seam so it's right sides together and then pin it back with right sides together. And then from there I can do this all the way around. So I'm going to pin that right sides together. I can pull the next seam up and through. Do the same. So take the pin out. Flip it right sides together. And then pin that whole panel right sides together along there. And then I'm going to keep doing that the whole way round stitch my seam allowance and then once it's all stitched I can pull it back through and we'll be end up with a really neat hem with all the seams hidden inside and then the last jobs to do will just be to press it and to stitch the fabric down the inside of the zip and the skirt will be finished so I'm going to do this and I will be back to show you the finished skirt very very soon So this is my finished tulle skirt on my dress form with the petticoat underneath so if you haven't seen how I made the petticoat to go with it go back and check part one out and I'll show you how I made that from three shorter petticoats you could wear it without a petticoat as well and you can vary the length and the number of layers and the amount of tulle in each layer to suit your style of dress that you want to make for me this fullness is the perfect shape that I wanted and with the full skirt underneath it's giving me the movement I wanted as well but again you can adapt the shape of the skirt underneath it you can attach it to a bodice if you want to make it into a full dress so once you've got this basic sort of knowledge of how to put it together you can really play with it and make it your own to create the shape and size and length that you want for your design so I ended up with 10 layers of ruffles and there was 12 meters of tulle in each so all up I've gathered 120 meters of tulle to make this skirt because this skirt does take so much tulle I do recommend buying a full bolt it's so much easier to cut it from the bolt and get that straight line when you buy it from the fabric shop and they cut it and fold it it's really hard to then straighten it out again and it works out a lot cheaper so even though my gathers are 120 meters, I used about 28 or 30 meters that I cut from the bolt and I used 108 inch or 3 meter wide tulle in silk white which I buy from fabric.com but if you search extra wide tulle or 108 inch tulle there's lots of places that sell it in all sorts of colors. So you may have noticed when I had it on that the waist was really really tight on me that's because I'm going to put a corset over it and I'm going to actually give myself quite a bit of reduction with the corset. So if I make the waistband of this to my natural measurement, as soon as I put the corset on and tighten it, the skirt underneath is going to drop down. So if you are going to make it to go under a corset, make it almost too tight to do up so that when you get your corset on, you've got the reduction, the skirt stays sitting where you want it to sit. I hope you found this tutorial useful. It's a really versatile method of making big puffy skirts. I'll be back with part three soon where I'm going to show you how I make the corset to go with it which is going to be made from the same satin as I made the skirt from but with a beaded silver lace overlay and I'm thinking maybe a cape attached to it as well. So please subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you click that little bell icon that means you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I'll be back soon with a new video and a new tutorial and every week I also upload a weekly vlog which shows you behind the scenes as I'm working on things often with some more details or shows you other bits and bobs that I'm working on so they go up normally every Tuesday or Wednesday depending on how busy I am and how much time I've got to edit them but usually Tuesday evenings and you can get a bit more of a feel for what goes on in the Rockstars and Royalty Studio. Thanks for watching, see you soon.